Hello everyone and welcome back to the video. In today's video we're going to be talking about May Suma Top 12 is a super major happening this weekend in Japan, specifically in S Plus year with a ton of invaders. You have players like Riddles, you have players like Cosmos, the Buzz, Mutes. There's so many people from NA that could cause some serious damage and I'm incredibly excited about it. Our top 16 seeds has Karage, Cosmos, Yara, and now in 13th, Yoshidora, the Buzz, Kamehame, and Jogabu in 9th. In 7th place you're going to have both T and Mutes. 5th place, Massimo Shutone, 4th place Ken, 3rd place Riddles, 2nd place Mied, 1st place of course Akka. We're going to be going over the top 16 predictions as well as a couple players that I think could make some serious runs. So the bracket is divided into four parts before top 32, and I'm going to be talking about a player from every single one of those parts that isn't supposed to make top 16. The first one I want to give mention to is going to be Lima, because Japan does not have a Bayonetta player, especially a Bayonetta player on the level of Lima. There might be a couple of good ones here, but they are nowhere close to Lima's caliber, so people are probably not going to be super familiar with how to deal with this character. Now, his bracket isn't even insanely good from. He is supposed to go against Yoshidora, which he is projected to lose to. I think that is a very doable upset, though, because again, Lima is ridiculous, but also so is Yoshidora. So if he does lose that, I think his loser's run racket is okay as well. He does have to go against probably Akka, which could be pretty tough because Akka is a really, really strong opponent. But I definitely think he can pull that off. And then he goes into Hiro. Now, this isn't a terrible, terrible match for Bayonetta. You know, it's really hard to kill Bowser. But Lima, the way he plays Bayonetta is he would just camp you. He doesn't really care if he's getting a kill or not. He will just time you out anyway. So this is really, really good against a playstyle like Hiro because it doesn't matter if you're surviving to 80%. If you're not hitting me for two minutes, that you can live as long as you want. So I think Lima can definitely make both those upsets. And if he does upset Yoshidora, he would go into Mudes, which honestly is a pretty bad draw. But at that point, you've kind of already overperformed the seed, and that's all we really care about. The next player I want to talk about is going to be Suinoko. Now, his winner's run bracket is pretty unfortunate because he runs into Mio right away because I think he's seated fairly low. He did underperform his last two kind of regionals and major events, but he just had a top eight at Subiaki. He's been looking very clean lately. So I think he is seated a little bit low, but unfortunately, he does have to go up against Mio regardless of how he is seated. And then he goes into a pretty solid loser's bracket, in my opinion. He has to go against Lai, which I think he wins. Then he probably goes into Fatality, and that's a pretty rough match for Falcon. And we also haven't really seen Fatality at an event in a really long time, so he might be cooking up something seriously massive and absolutely farm, but he's more likely than not going to be a little bit rusty, maybe a little bit jet-lagged as well. No Johns, of course, but I would definitely want to favor Suinoko there. And then they go into Kome. Now, this one's also a little bit up in the air, but I think that's an upset that Suinoko can 1,000% make. I've been very impressed by them lately and the young like propaganda has also been being pushed a lot more lately especially with Kobe's huge win at Cirque to CFL so I think Suinoko can make a pretty decent loser run and it's not even impossible that he can't upset me I think he definitely can do that he's an amazing player as well so I think he's more likely to make his run through the loser side of bracket but if you saw a winner's run I wouldn't be super surprised really quickly I do want to mention that Suinoko actually beat Kome at Subageki so that's definitely something to consider for the benefit of his loser's run but I want to talk about Kanaji now because I have just been very impressed by by him. His first matchup that he's supposed to lose is against Injelly, which isn't an amazing draw. I do think it's a favorable matchup for Snake, but he probably just doesn't know it as well as Injelly knows the Snake matchup, because we fit is a pretty uncommon character. But Snake is a character that could just kind of better character the other opponent, because his game plan is so fundamentally strong. So I definitely think that is a doable upset. It might be tough, but I think he has that dog in him. Then he would go into a Meki, and he has a very favorable matchup versus Zaf, who is probably the best Peach player in Australia, unless I'm forgetting someone very obvious. Zaf is crazy good and I think it's like 6-1 in Kanaji's favor or something so you'd probably want to maybe even favor Kanaji here now Umeki also has a lot of experience in the snake matchup you know there's a ton of top snakes in Japan but this could be a little more even than people might think on paper and maybe even tilted into Kanaji's favor and then at that point he would be going against Jogobu and I have no idea how that go but hey he's already over for seed but even in the loser side of bracket he's supposed to go against Hungrybox which may seem like a blessing because it's no snake versus Jigglypuff but also Hungrybox did really really well at Summit versus Apollo Kagi, like insanely well. So that might be a little bit harder than expected, but he could also just pull out the shell. Maybe Hungrybox isn't as experienced in that matchup. So I think Kanaji can make upsets both in the winner's and loser's side of bracket to overperform his seed. And the last player I want to talk about before going on to the top 16 is going to be Masha. Now he is projected to lose versus Yara, and Yara has been playing very hot as of late, but Masha is 4-1 versus Toro, who's the second best Samus player in Japan. So he's clearly very good at the matchup. And that is a super possible upset. Masha is a ridiculous 
ridiculously good player, and I definitely think he can take that one. And if he is able to take it, he would go into Ken, which they've never played before, so I'm not super confident there. But let's say he does just lose, and then he would go versus Umeki, and he beat Umeki the last time they played. It is 1-1 one, one lifetime, but hey, he has it the most recent time. And then he goes into Cosmos, and Cosmos has a notorious wolf problem. You throw a wolf player at Cosmos, there's like a 90% chance he's either going to struggle very hard or lose. So I think Masha, both the winners and loser side of bracket, could make upsets and make runs to maybe even top 8 because he is that caliber player. He is ridiculous. We just don't really see him often, and I hope he does well at this event because, my lord, he is crazy. And here we have our top 16 sheet, made of course by the lovely iCookie Monsters. Their stuff will be down below, and I know we didn't cover a ton of players in this video, so if there's anyone that I left out, please let me know down below. I'll be sure to go over how I think the run is, but the first matchup that we have in the winner side of bracket is going to be Aquila versus me. It's also just because I forgot to mention, this is just a projected scene, just so we can talk about everyone that is supposed to make top 16, but our first one's going to be Aquila versus Mudes, and I'm going to favor Mudes here because the last time they played Mudes, it was a clinic. He played it so well. He is clearly amazing at the Steve matchup. Now, I'm sure Akala has been studying up massively on the VODs, but Mudes is probably the best player in the world versus Steve, at least in my opinion, so I would probably favor him there. Then you have Ken versus Osimo. Now, it is 2-1 in Ken's favor, but Osimo did win the last time they played, and he has leveled up massively as of late, so I'm going to give it to him. I've been so impressed by Osimo. Like, in my opinion, he's a top 15 player in the world now. He is ridiculous ridiculous so i'm gonna give that to him mia versus t now these two players have never played before and for that i'm gonna give it to mia just because when no one's played against mia it is really difficult to beat him as well as i think game watch is pretty well versus pac-man and kazuya and we do have mia's secondary steve which could come out i doubt it but we also haven't seen t at least at the super top level of these tournaments in a little bit so mia has been more practiced as late and i'm gonna give that to him and then finally we have riddles versus shuton now the last time they played was at wanted and shuton did win that pretty hard so i'm gonna give him the the benefit of the doubt but that was all ages versus terry so we could see the cause come out we also have been seeing riddles play a lot more terry as of late and even though that didn't get him the win versus shoot on the last time they played i'm really happy he's been doing that because i just think it's a great idea in general i think terry is a ridiculous character and riddles is by far the best terry in the world so happy for him to be doing that more but i still think shoot is probably gonna take it and our first matchup in the loser side of bracket is going to be Jogaboo versus Karage. And this is a ditto that we've actually seen quite a lot of times. And a majority of the times, it does go to Jogaboo's favor. I think it's like 9-3 or 10-3 in Jogaboo's favor. So I'm going to give it to him there. But Karage has taken sets off him in the past, so it's definitely not impossible. Then we have Kameme versus Cosmos. Now, they've only ever played twice, and they've only ever played once with the current characters that they're using. And it did go into Kameme's favor. So just off that, yeah, I'm going to give it to Kameme again. But it was a very close Game 5 set, though. It's not impossible that Cosmos gets it but off the stats are going to give that to Cosmos. Now we have DeBuzz versus Yara now. This is a bit tricky because I'm not sure who DeBuzz would play. I think it's probably going to be Rosalina and I am going to give him the favor there just because I think DeBuzz does really well versus Samus players. He has positive records pretty much versus every top Samus he's played so I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt there even though Yara is crazy. And then finally we have Yoshidora versus Now. And even though Now has been very impressive as of late, it's really really hard to bet against Yoshidora. He is a ridiculous player so I'm going to give him that matchup but that's probably the one i'm the least confident on out of everyone we've gone over so far our first matchup in losers ninth is going to be ken jogaboo and this is 2-0 in ken's favor as well as just being sonic falcon which is a pretty rough matchup so i'm going to give that one to ken but jogaboo has been looking pretty impressive lately it's not impossible that the upset happens there but now we have this juicy matchup of akala versus kameme loser gets ninth and the only time these guys have played Kameme took it, so I'm going to predict again that Kameme takes it and Akala's out at ninth. My dear viewer, the drama is huge here. Now, is this actually going to happen? It could. This is unironically something that could happen. It probably won't, but if both these players get to him, these are some of the rougher matchups Akala should have, so huge drama. I'm putting him out at ninth if he wins the entire tournament. Just say, hey, I don't know. <laughs> we did it for content. Then we have Riddles versus the Buzz. Now, this is a matchup that usually goes in Riddles' favors, though the Buzz has taken it a couple times, so this could go either way, but I'm going to give it to Riddles, and we have T Yoshidora, and I believe they've only played once or twice, but it did go in T's favor. I know T beat him at Umabora, and I think that's the most recent time they played, at least at a major, so going off of that, I'm going to give the win to T. In winner semis, we have Mudes versus Osimo, and this is a matchup that we've never seen before, and I'm also not super confident how good Mudes is in the matchup, but he's also one of the most studied players in the world, so I imagine he's definitely going to put some time into learning this one, but he is going against Osimo, who is down 0-2 to Emeki, so just based off that, 
I'm going to give it to Mudes just because, you know, Osimo has struggled against this character in the past. That doesn't mean it's a guaranteed win because Mudes and Umeki are different players, but I'm going to give Mudes the benefit of the doubt there. Then you have Mia versus Shuto. Now, this one's pretty interesting because Shuto did win twice at Kowloon 5, but Mia was beating him before that. I'm going to give it to Mia and just say that Shuto was playing out of his mind, had crazy momentum from his loser run at Kowloon, and Mia got nervous because he wanted to get the three-peat. So I'm going to give this one to Mia. Then we have in the loser side, Ken versus Kamehameha. It's 7-5, and I think Ken's favor, I could be wrong about that it's been going back and forth between them a lot i'm gonna give it to ken just because i've been seeing a little bit more of him at the super top level as of late but that's also just because kamehameha hasn't really been going to too many events so this could go either way very very unsure about that then you have riddles versus t now this one i think is going to be a banger of a set because they've only ever played once at ultimate wanted i think four and t did win that it was a full kazuya ditto i think this could be a counter pick war because clearly t is good in the kazuya ditto riddles probably won't want to force that again he's been playing a lot more terry as of late so we could see maybe game once Kazu Ditto, and whoever wins that game might have the counterpick advantage to get them to win the set because it could go Pac-Man, then we could go to Terry. I don't think Terry does particularly great versus Pac-Man, but it's probably better than Kazu does just because you have that add ability. So this could go either way. Again, it really does depend on who wins this first game for me. I'm going to give it to T just in case Rills is really confident in the Kazuya and then they have the Ditto again and T's able to win that because he is very, very good at the Ditto. Not as good as Akala, but he is still very good at the Ditto. But regardless, I'm going to give this to T. Again, pretty unsure about it, but I think game one will be pivotal in this matchup. In Losers Quarters, our first matchup is going to be Osimo Ken, and this is going to be a repeat of Winners Quarters, so I'm going to give this one to Osimo again, but as I said earlier, Ken has beaten Osimo in the past, he can definitely do it again, and then we have Shuto and Tino, this one's pretty interesting, these guys have played a lot, and the record is very heavily in Shuto's favor, but as of late, T has been winning a majority of their encounters, so I'm going to say that he wins it again, but again, Shuto has been winning most of the sets that they played just not recently, he clearly knows how to beat T, the Kazi is probably a wrench in his plan, though, maybe doesn't know how to deal with that super well so we'll have to see if it's the cause or the pack been bringing him success we'll also have to see if it's the all or the ages because all four of those characters have definitely been shown whenever they play so that one's going to be a banger regardless who wins and we have our top four mudes and mia and osimo and t now for winners finals of mudes mia on paper this is very very clearly mia because this matchup is abhorrent for peach but and it's a big but at Genesis, Mudes using some kind of wizard magic was able to beat Meister, despite the matchup being god awful. So he might be able to do it again, but this matchup is again so abysmal for Peach that I'm going to give it to Mia here. But Mudes, he's done it in the past, and he's probably one of the only players in the world that I'd actually even say he has a chance versus Mia in this matchup because again, it is really, really bad. But in loser semifinals, you have Osimo versus T. I'm gonna give it to Osimo just because the record is 4-2 in his favor, and he did win the last encounter that they played. As well as him being playing very, very well today. And T hasn't been on the top of this game. We also haven't seen as much from T. And this could be his great return tournament. Because at some point, he's going to have one. I mean, fourth place for him is already good placement here. But I'm going to give it to Osimo. Then we have Mudes versus Osimo in Losers Finals. And at this point, Osimo would have already lost to Mudes. So Mudes clearly knows the matchup. As well as it still not being in Osimo's favor versus Umeki. So I'm going to give that to Mudes again. And then in Grand Finals, it's the same story of Mudes versus Mia. And I'm going to go with the same bet if this matchup is just really really hard and give it to Mia. But if you're an NA fan, do not give up hope. Mudes definitely can win this matchup. He can win literally any matchup in the world because he's amazing. But Mia has been on such a tear recently. I don't think he's missed a top two in a major in three or four tournaments in a row. Like, he's been looking insane. So that's going to be my prediction. I thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, if there's any players that I left out, please just let me know down below. Sports been absolutely unreal lately. Thank you guys for everything. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.